You may have used stackoverflow.com before, but do you know what a Stack Overflow actually is? Thanks for watching Lori Wired. And in this video, we're going to demonstrate a Stack Overflow happening in real time using raw assembly. Now, a Stack Overflow is a programming error that occurs when a program tries to use more memory on the stack than what has actually been allocated. The call stack is a special kind of data structure that every single program is allocated, where it can store temporary data like function parameters, return values, local variables, or any other kind of temporary data that it might need during execution. One common type of function that commonly trigger stack overflows are recursive functions. Now recursive functions, if they don't have a proper base case or don't have a proper method of executing, continue recursing, 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 and filling up all of the memory that's available inside of the call stack until it triggers that stack overflow. At this point, the operating system will either kill your program, or if you try to access the memory out of that range, you will actually trigger a segmentation fault. So let's get right into it and let's see what that looks like. Now I'm going to open up my GitHub repository and I have all of the code available for you if you would like to follow along. Simply go over to the Stack Overflow portion and you can see the assembly file available for you as well as all of the supporting Python files that are going to help us visualize the current state of the stack while we're triggering this Stack Overflow. Now do be warned, we are purposefully triggering a Stack Overflow, so this is going to cause our program to crash. So don't run this if you don't want your program to crash. Now I'm going to go over to my Raspberry Pi where I'm actually going to be executing this program and let's take a look and see what files we have available to us. First of all, we have our assembly code, which we're going to be adding to. We're going to be adding that recursive call, which is going to cause our stack to entirely fill up and trigger that stack overflow. Additionally, I have a couple extra files that are Python files, which are going to help us visualize what is the state of the stack pointer and how much memory have we currently allocated on the stack until we trigger that stack overflow. First of all, let's check out the contents of our overflow.s. So I'm going to do vi overflow.s and I already have this structure created here in our assembly which is going to write to two different files latest sp and original sp which stands for stack pointer and the stack pointer points to the next available location on the stack which we're going to be adding data to so as this stack pointer goes to different memory addresses this is actually allocating more memory onto the stack now I'm going to be writing to two different files to keep track of the original stack pointer value when we first start the program and then the subsequent stack pointer values as we're going through and as we're actually triggering those different recursive calls. So let's go through to our other parts of our program and look at the portion of interest. The primary function that we're most interested in is this recurse label. Now this is going to contain the recursive call that's going to keep calling recurse over and over again and filling up the stack until we've entirely filled all of the memory that's available and allocated to us. Before we add the recursive call inside of our assembly code, let's try to look at what the high level code looks equivalently inside of C. We can ignore this portion since it's just an optimization to try to reduce the number of writes where we're keeping track of our stack pointer. Let me open up Notepad++ and let's quickly write this recursive function equivalent. So I'm just going to say void recurse and let's keep track of our depth. So how many times we've recursed and we'll pass that as a parameter. Now what we want to do is we want to simply print the depth to the console. So we'll say depth and add our number and pass that as an argument. And now we want to make the recursive portion of this call. So we can simply do recurse and then we'll do depth plus one since this is an additional recursive call. Now, if you notice, the issue with this is we're continuously calling the recurse function, but we don't have any kind of base case to actually get us out of this recursive function. This is going to keep recursing on forever until we have entirely filled up the stack and the operating system halts our program. Now, let's go back to our assembly code and let's add this recursive call to our assembly file. So we're going to go over to here. Your code goes here and we can get rid of this line and let's add a new one. Now what we want to do is we want to increase the depth argument by one. Now we have the depth argument right here. We're doing the same thing inside of our assembly code. This is going to be passed inside of our R0 register. So I'm just going to do add 
R0, R0, and then the immediate value one. And then we want to add the actual recursive call. So we'll do branch with link, and then the function name or the label name was recurse. So we'll do branch with link over to recurse. Now this has no way of actually exiting out of this, so we're going to recurse and recurse basically forever. Now you'll notice what's happening is we're pushing the link register to the stack in the beginning, and then we're going through this entire recurse function, but we're never getting to the part where we're popping off that link register into the program counter. Now you see we're going to be filling up the stack with all of the values of the link register getting pushed and pushed and pushed, but we're never going to pop them off. Now let's save this file and go ahead and generate our executable. So we're going to do arm, Linux, GNU EABI, assemble. And then we'll take our overflow.s, and I'm using arm v7 assembly for this. Dash o, let's generate our object file. Overflow.o, and now let's create the executable. Arm Linux, GNU EABI, GCC, and let's statically link this so we can include the library calls inside of this application. And we'll take our object binary and generate our overflow executable. And now you can see we've created this new overflow binary right here. Now let me quickly execute this just to show what's going to happen before we try visualizing all of the stack values here. Let's do dot slash overflow. And here we go. You can see it's executing extremely fast, but we have this stack pointer that we're continuously printing the current value of. And if you notice, this is actually getting smaller and smaller and smaller for every single iteration. And the depth is getting larger and larger and larger, increasing by one as we continue recursing throughout this function. The reason the stack pointer is getting smaller and smaller is because on most machines, the stack grows downward, meaning that the more memory that you're allocating on the stack, the lower the memory address actually gets for the stack pointer. So you're getting lower and lower and lower as you increase the amount of data that that's stored on the stack. Now you might be wondering, how much data do you actually get on the stack before you run out of memory? Well, this is gonna be different for every single system. So let's check on this system, how much memory we have available to our program. So there's a specific command that we can use. We can use u limit dash s and you see 8192. So this is the amount of kilobytes that are available to us inside of our stack. So if we surpass 8192 kilobytes, that means we're triggering that stack overflow that we want. Now, if we want to keep track of how much memory we've used on the stack at any given time, we have to keep track of the original value of the stack pointer versus the current actual value of the stack pointer. Now we're keeping track of that in two different files. We have original SP and then we have latest SP. So if I allow my program to run just for a little bit of time, we end up with this value of the stack pointer. This is the current value, the actual value while the program is executing before I interrupted that execution. And let's see, what is the current value of the original stack pointer? That's this 0xffe36688 in hexadecimal. Now what we want to do is we want to take this value and then subtract the current value from that and that should tell us how much data in bytes we've used at this given time. So let me take this value and let's go over to our hex calculator and I'm going to drop this in. So this is the original stack pointer value and I'm going to go and take the latest stack pointer before I interrupted the program, copy that and then paste that in. And then let's subtract this latest value from the original value to see how much we took up in bytes. So it looks like we took up 4D04C in bytes. Now let's translate that over to decimal instead of hexadecimal, and then we just need to translate this into kilobytes instead of bytes. I'm gonna take this value and put this inside of our hexadecimal to decimal calculator calculate that, it looks like we have 315,468 in decimal in bytes. So now all we need to do is copy that value, go over to our byte calculator, and convert that to kilobytes. When I had interrupted our program, we had used 315 kilobytes out of the amount that had been allocated to us at that time. Now if we want to see what we had been allocated, 
it was that 8192. So we still had a good amount of memory available on the stack for us to allow our program to execute. Now let's let our stack overflow run to completion and cause our program to crash. So I'm going to go over to VNC so we can use our Python scripts to visualize the stack overflow while it's happening. I have all of my files on here. These are going to be our Python visualizers, which are going to help us. And then I have a shell script, which is first going to trigger the Python and then go over and trigger the executable that we generated from our assembly code. And I'm going to run dot slash run overflow dot sh. And this is starting the Python in the background. And now it is triggering our program to run and it's just allocating and recursing and recursing and recursing. If you look on the left hand side inside of the visualizer, this shows our current value of our stack pointer, which is getting lower and lower and lower since the stack grows downward in memory addresses. And once it goes below this minimum stack value, that means our program has allocated more memory on the stack than it had available to it, so it's going to cause that crash. If you look on the right hand side, we see our stack limit, which we generated from this U limit dash S versus the amount of stack that's actually been used. So once this number of kilobytes goes over, we're going to cause that stack overflow. And we're actually going to get a segmentation fault here. Now, fortunately for you, you don't have to do all of the math that I was doing beforehand. The Python script will do this automatically for you. So let's let our stack grow and grow and grow and see if we can get our stack overflow to occur. So we're allocating more and more kilobytes on the stack. We're getting pretty close at this time. We're going to trigger our segmentation fault very shortly. And that stack pointer value is just getting lower and lower in memory addresses. And sure enough, here we go. We can see that we have completely filled up the stack as well as gone below the minimum stack value that we were allocated for. We did get a segmentation fault because we were trying to access memory that was outside of the allocated amount that was part of our stack. So this is what caused the program to crash in the end. Now you might notice that some of the values aren't quite fully there. It doesn't look like we fully filled up the stack, but we actually did. The program just crashed before we could update our Python scripts and show that the stack had grown beyond what it was allowed to grow. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired everyone and I'll catch you in the next video. Ooh. Somehow I don't think I'm gonna get out of sixth position here.